Hey everyone, welcome back to another exciting episode of Tech Productions. Today I bankrupt being joined once again by Jimmy and Jake. Yes, sir. What's going on, y'all? And today's matchup is actually Jake versus Tanner, which we haven't seen Tanner in a shop for a while. He actually got a chance to come back out, and I think he's borrowing Nick's Surge Broly deck, and Jake is piling the Invoker deck. So yeah, it's so it's so unfortunate that he's back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on, man. Uh, so let's let's get into it, guys. So, what made you have you played Invoker before, Jake? Actually, no. When I originally bought into set nine, I think it was when these surge leaders came out. Um, my the person who I bought product with, and I kind of had an agreement that like they were going to get Invoker stuff, and I was going to get like uh, sell things. So, um. I hadn't really had the cards to play it until recently, and I just wanted to try it out because, you know, we're in between sets, and, like, this is the period of time where you, like, play weird decks like this. So I just wanted to give it a shot and uh, see how it would perform. So without giving away what happens this match, how did you like Invoker? So the core gameplay of Invoker, when you can actually like get your engine running and you're like invoking expensive extra cards every turn, feels really nice. Um, I do think that my inexperience with the deck, combined with like some of the more dated cards in the list, kind of make it slower than it used to be. And you know, cards out of the deck have been straight nerfed and everything. So uh, it's interesting to see like kind of how it compares with even other surge leaders which were like relatively close to its release you know just with the new tech mm -hmm. that everything's gotten gotcha and i can see here tanner's literally putting on the aggro very early on with the five drop gogeta oh yeah he knows this matchup well yeah me and me and him have played the invoker matchup at nauseum at this point uh invoker is one of my favorite decks this game has ever eked out and it's uh, I, I continue to think about it every weekend when I show up at the shop. Like, damn, it's going to be the next week that I bring out Invoker. So I was actually really excited to see another Invoker at the table. Uh, because while I've played it so much, I have not got to play against it so much. Yeah, it pops up now and again at locals. And uh, even at like regional events or bigger tournaments, it still rears its head from now and then. And that just shows you how strong it is. But you know what it's not strong against is uh, double strikers that burn you alive. Yeah. Especially uh, early on, like 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 you mentioned, where you've, uh, Jimmy, you've played with Tanner a lot in this type of matchup. Mm -hmm. He's aware that he needs to play um, aggression early just so mm -hmm. he can get uh, Evoker down to a point where he feels comfortable without you have to worry about like getting Jesus on board or mm -hmm. the gate heavy aspect of it or the uh, like sense of being or just control aspect. Yeah. Uh, we talked a little bit before we recorded this, but this is uh, kind of more of a, a classic Invoker build. Uh, I mean, you can see that from the old 6-drop SR in the list. Most people have kind of transitioned into the uh, uh, pretty much infinite triple striker. Yeah, uh, I run the a... infinite triple striker at a 4, and I run those 6-drops mm -hmm. uh, at a 2-of just to like... If I don't see anything or my big six drop gets killed, I need some kind of battle card to help me in the game. Oh, for sure. But I, I could I could see that uh, triggering the memory in Tanner here of seeing that six drop and be like, okay, I am now on a timer. If I don't finish this game out by the time that that six drop is able to touch the field, it's game. Um, especially because uh, this is Nick's build of Surge Broly. I don't remember all of the like counter plays that he runs, but I don't think there's a single counter play that Nick could run that could uh, really shut down the uh, ultimate six drop play. So there aren't any counter plays, but unfortunately, mm -hmm. once his leader is awakened, all he has to do is detach a material in the battle step, and it pops my six drop like a grape. Of course. Well, that's that's more so for the triple striker. Uh, where these uh, the older six drop would play better into a catablo setup, which the limit on catablo is kind of kind of you know completely kills that strategy in some situations. It's kind of like a second um, seeker rare. You see it, you see it, oh, you don't. Sure. You don't. Um, but I I feel like in the surge Broly matchup, Broly does not have a lot of options to deal with catablo at all. Um, well, I mean. 
Nobody really does. <laughs> is yeah, it just going to burn yeah. you alive? Yeah, that's what true. What he's doing here, though, is he's staying at a really high life total. And mm. um, even though he's kind of like running out of resources hand-wise to do it, it's uh, allowing him to be ready for that burn damage when it comes in on top of those infinite triple strike swings. Mm -hmm. And also a, a fairly early awaken for an invoker, which it's definitely needed in this matchup. But it always just feels so bad to have to surge so quickly and lose out on that front side uh, pitch an extra card. Yeah, so this this turn is kind of weird. So here he's going in pretty deep on this Piccolo. I've taken the burn damage. I need to awaken. And uh, I kind of see the writing on the wall here. And my hope is, is that I can get him to combo his entire hand once I get down to two life on this uh, Gogeta swing or something. And um, really kind of catch him off guard. See here I'm going to play combination attack and bounce the Piccolo. <laughs> Unfortunately, because of the Goten, he's got plenty of energy, so uh, I think he just goes right back into it. Mm -mm. Which is kind of what I'm hoping he'll do. Yeah, he goes right back into it. See, here I'm hoping he's going to swing, tap the Gogeta, burn me again, and then combo out his entire hand to end the game. And I'm going to detach a material, grab the combination attack from my drop area, and play it again in the same battle step, and just completely blow him out. And that's really the only way I see that I'm going to win this game. So I'm kind of making really risky plays uh, on the off chance that he makes an error and that allows me to take the win. This is a strategy that we call playing to your outs, which is you think the, your only way to win a game is through an unorthodox play line. So you set yourself up to be in that situation should that like line of play occur. It doesn't always work, but if it gives you a 5% chance of winning in a what would otherwise be a 0% game, I say go for it. Yep. Like, I, I, we always see it after locals, at least uh, at least with us. Uh, we're like, ah, oh, damn, if only I'd done this, I would have had this chance, or only if I'd done this, I would have had that 5k extra combo power. Uh, so sometimes when you're thinking that during the game, it's better to think think about that then instead of after uh, so while it does suck to have to awaken so early and uh surge so quickly you know what other options did you have there other than just you know hope <laughs> I can tell you from what was in my hand and what you saw me combo in earlier turns it's a lot of six drops and a whole lot of nothing else see here oh. I'm gonna Pay the two, which was pretty expensive at this stage of the game, to go in with Tyranny's cost and try and get some kind of other play line going. I don't want to give him more resources, so I'm just going to swing at the super, super combo. Of course. I mean, you know, potentially next turn he's bringing the pickle back out, so it's smart to get rid of a one of his uh, free alliance cards. Yeah, and if he taps the Gogeta with the Piccolo, sure, he gets to draw two cards, but it's one less double striker I have to worry about. But this is Nick's build, and Nick does like the uh, Shin Shinron. Yes. Like, and that... Uh, not the strongest in this matchup, considering most of my hand is extra cards, but it gives him a ton of information and allows him to conduct his turn perfectly. Was it minus two? You rip a, uh, a card, a battle card, I think it's like 20,000 or 25,000? Yeah, and the only target is my rival seeker, unfortunately, which you see with the six drop, in a couple turns I'll be able to go into that and potentially start swinging. Like we mentioned before, that surge ability on Broly is just in the way. I'll need two Goku chains or some other strategy to break through. I do want to point out, like, we just saw your hand, and what, what really hurts is that you haven't seen, because like Jimmy said, you're playing an older build of Invoker, and we have not seen the 3-drop yet, and that has to hurt at this point. Yeah, um, we were talking a little bit before the recording, and Jimmy and I kind of agree that there there's play lines and ways to win without the Vegeta. Like, you don't really need it. But in 
this kind of game where I'm taking this much pressure, it would be really nice to cast Emperor's Death Beam for one. Yeah, for, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I'm I, seeing more and more Invoker decks kind of drop the uh, three-drop Vegeta. I'm forgetting the name of the card. Uh, in Inspired favor of just, Technique. Inspired Technique, yes. Uh, in favor of just playing like uh, playing Sensu Beans, Violent Rays, Protector of the People. Uh, some decks are kind of running into like a cooler arrival uh, to have protection until turn five, turn six, when Rival Seeker and Apex are live. And just pitching, running all the extra cards to pitch off of the leader, uh, which makes for a really interesting uh, type of gameplay because it's. Some people will call it boring, but I think it's really interesting to watch those decks play. Just as much as I think it's interesting to watch a older style um, Invoker list play, even though the Vegeta is not in play yet. Uh, normally, you would see that. Um, so, like, while I think it's a harder matchup for Jake in this situation because of the style of deck that uh, is being played. Now, it's been a while. Just remind me real quick. The the infinite triple striker, or obviously based on how many extra cards are in your drop area, they're red blue. That's the promo one, right? That's not the one that restands three energy for you, right? No, the three energy is the one that we were talking about earlier in the game that I run yeah, two copies the, of. Okay, it's the uh, set SR. Yeah, yeah. The promo did get reprinted though, which was really mm -hmm. nice. Broly on the awakened side. When you, if I'm correct, three or less life can pop a card. I can't recall if that gets past barrier or not. It doesn't. Uh, I don't think. And I know that. Curtain... I'm, I'm pretty. I'm pretty sure it does. Ooh, okay. Yeah. So that's yeah, that's just mind. rough matchup all around. I would then. say strategy universe seven for for protection if you have the energy for it. But if it gets past barrier, which I cannot remember, it does. But if Jimmy is correct, it does. Then yeah, never mind. Yeah. I mean, either way, the my kill card in in this deck, the the six drop triple strike, it, it is not barrier. He is deflect, but he just cannot get around Broly. In, in any meaningful way, unless he's completely out of materials. Yep. Uh, Broly does ignore barrier, yes. Okay. Wow. I, okay. I, just, I just can't remember. Uh, I never actually played the Surge Broly. I played against enough times to know that I hate on the backside when it gets down to three life. I can't remember why, though. So, there we go. <laughs> oh, yeah. That I think that's the... Probably the most underrated part of the leader is just its straight surge abilities. Um, I, I think it's the best at facilitating a red-green strategy for him being red-green as well. Uh, and I, I, I think red-green flows best with that leader. And then on top of it, you also have the insane ability of just being able to pop something during barrier during the battle step. Uh, yeah. So, did, did did a cat just like explode? <laughs> yeah, my cat just yelled. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> that was fantastic. <laughs> yeah, he really does not like Surge Broly. <laughs> uh, good. Everybody needs to spam Nick and tell him uh, to burn this fucking deck. Oh no, dude! I I actually really like. Surge Broly, and if it wasn't so popular at our locals, I'd be playing it more often myself. So, here's my thing. I know the threat of Triple Strike is a quote-unquote issue, but there's no point in this matchup where it's kind of a threat, because he'll be able to activate the um, Awakened part naturally. So, I I'm we didn't get a chance to get Tanner on for today's video, um, but him awakening with six life to me just kind of baffled me because you lose that draw aspect of the leader. And I'm, I'm really curious, like in your experience, uh, Jake, did you feel like when he did that, it didn't matter? Like he was fine without that draw ability. I guess he has Piccolo, which does give him a draw too. So, yeah, uh, he just had so many cards in his hand from Alliance. I don't think it really mattered in our matchup. Plus, he's getting to peek the hand and rip with these Brolies and uh, Sen Shenron, so he was totally fine in the card advantage yeah. aspect. And uh, 
to mention the elephant in the room if we want to step back just a little bit on uh, what cards were in hand on that Crown of Ret play. Um, you there was no Apex in that list, and you went for Supreme Kai, right? Uh, and uh, I don't own Apex. It, it's a very expensive card, and uh, you know I just really wanted to try the deck, and I wasn't gonna let not owning one card in the list really stop me. Mm. See, that's the one card me and Fluff don't own, or I would let you borrow it. I mean, I I offered, but uh, I forgot to bring it. <laughs> so, uh, so it's this your next fault. Weekend, this next weekend, I will bring it. All right, so you're saying we need counter Apex next weekend? I ain't saying shit. Okay, fair enough. The thing is, you don't know what deck it's going to be played in. Jake oh. said he's playing Mono Yellow Frieza next week with a little spice in it. You know what I'm saying? Ooh, Mono Ooh, Yellow. Yellow. Is that one Frieza with blue red? Who well, said that? I'm building something else. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Jake. I spoiled your uh, your plays next week. It's all good. Man. But now you got to make it. People want to yeah. see that. <laughs> set one Frieza. Tricolor set one Frieza. Blue, red, yellow? Yeah, of course. Yeah. You add okay. the, you just, the swap you just, chain you to just it? Play, you just world peace out Apex. Oh, okay. okay. You world peace Apex. Yeah, I get the 10 energy. Yeah, easy peasy, bro. Uh, but a, a lot of people say that not owning Apex is a gatekeeper to playing Invoker. And while I do kind of attend, uh, tend to agree with that, I think at a local level... I think the Invoker package is still insanely strong without needing Apex. Uh, would you... I, I don't know if you got to play Kai uh, in any of the matches, but would Kai be the secret rare of choice, uh, in your opinion, if you don't own Apex? You know, if you have access to Baby Hatch, I think Baby Hatch requires a mono blue leader, right? I, I have no fun. Yeah, so <laughs> I, I don't think... Heroin's lineage is decent. Um, it's really hard. The problem with uh, recommending a secret rare for Invoker is that Apex just fits the list so perfectly, and everything else is kind of clunky. Um, I mean, this is kind of going out on a limb, but Frieza's Army Reborn could be a really nice, cheap alternative because most of your energy is going to be blue red anyway. And on the front mm -hmm. side of your leader, you can take yourself all the way down to two and then just defend with your massive hand of extra cards. And then when you drop uh, Army Reborn, you'll get to peek the hand, rip an extra card, kind of like your leader does anyway. And then uh, you'll uh, get two rips and then you swing Quad Strike after wiping the way. It, you know, it's a decent alternative. Yeah, I'm not going to lie, I forgot that card existed. Yeah. <laughs> So we kind of talked about this earlier. Is this the card that has deflect? Like I said, it's been a while since I've, I've seen the Invoker playlist. I, he might have deflect. Um, I'm trying to f figure out if it did, if Adele has. Like I said, it's been a while since, since I've looked at this particular list. And I can't remember which cards have deflect and which cards have. Oh, yeah. I don't think he does. Because okay. uh, he asked me when before he played the Adele. Okay, cool. Because I know Videlis is a counter thing. I just wanted to make sure we cover that basis to be safe. But getting this card out as a 10k must have hurt just a little bit. <laughs> yeah, felt pretty rough. Uh, I really, I just wanted to get an invoker on the board so I could defend myself. You see, I'm at one. So I really just need a way to have access to some, some of my more expensive extra cards. But my hand size is getting pretty low, low on life. Uh, made a couple missteps. I don't know if people caught that. You know, I'm sure I'll get a hear about it in the comments. Like I looked at the top three with uh, TLP Arena earlier, and then didn't put the right card on top, and then looked with Royal Condemnation from the drop area. Oh, <laughs> yeah. So every damn time I break out Invoker, I do that at least twice. Yeah. So I've right. you know I've made a few mistakes throughout the game and. Uh, here, I'm just hoping that they mount some kind of defense, and maybe they'll be forgiven. I know, like, one of our newer guys has also been playing Invoker lately as well, and I think in one of the matchups, he accidentally did the effect first before activating T.O.P., so, I mean, it happens from new yeah. players to older players. I mean, 
especially when you get caught in the moment, like you don't have any cards on your leader anymore. You know, you your card just got yeah. nagged. And in this situation, as we see right here, he went for game, comboed out, like you're in a tight spot, and it just it just happened the way it did. And smartly he used the unison there, knowing that that's one of Invoker's biggest weaknesses is combat with unisons. Yeah, that was before uses were a thing too. Yeah, exactly. So with that being said, hope you all enjoyed today's matchup. Keep mind those buttons down below and on the screen. And like always, read your cards, know your place, and fluff out.